Welcome to Black Onyx, where we hope to keep you better informed. With me is Ian Power, the Chief Investment Officer at Truffle Asset Management, discussing the Truffle Flexible Fund. Ian, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Andrew. Ian, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into investing. Andrew, I've been in the industry for quite some time. Um, I joined the industry in 1993, straight out of varsity from Rand uh, Afrikaans University, where I had a background in finance and investment. That was my, my uh, undergraduate and postgraduate degree. And I was lucky to get into Rand Merchant Bank um, as a role in the investment uh, accounting side of the business, where I spent 18 months um, really honing my teeth in terms of uh, the back office side of the business, following which I went into the, an equity analyst role at uh, the business for a couple of years and then gradually moved into the fund management side of the business. Um, I spent 17 years in total at RMB and then in 2010 left RMB and joined Truffle to help build a boutique um, owner managed business. Ian, give us the background of Truffle Asset Management. So Truffle is an owner managed boutique um, business We've been going for over 10 years, so you know, even though the business might not be uh, that well known, we certainly have over a decade behind us in terms of experience. As a business, we have uh, critical mass. Um, as I said, we've been around for 10 years. We've got eight retail collective investment schemes uh, covering a whole variety of different mandates, and the balance of the business really represented by some fairly sizable segregated uh, institutional mandates. So from a, from a business and a continuity perspective, um, well entrenched, uh, significant critical mass with a significant depth of resource uh, across the business. So some of our strategies typically would cover uh, Regulation 28, typical pension fund um, savings, contractual savings vehicles. We also have uh, various specialist equity mandates um, managed to different benchmarks depending on what client requirements are. We have uh, flexible income mandates and income mandates. We also run a bespoke property unit trust for one of our bigger multi-managers and uh, effectively um, also have some non-reg 28 multi-asset absolute return mandates. That pretty much makes up the broad suite of the Truffle retail products that we offer to our clients. We also manage some alternative asset um, strategies, specifically a, a, a hedge fund strategy. Uh, it's got a track record which is over seven years and very different from your typical long only investment where we can employ different strategies in terms of alpha generation. Um, and from a return perspective, certainly the fund has generated very, very competitive and compelling returns um, over its history. So at Truffle, we also think some of our competitive advantages are very specific to us, especially when we look at the industry in general. And I'll give you a sense of what those advantages are. One of the big advantages is our median level of experience. So our median level of experience in Truffle and for a business that's 10 years old, our median experience is over 20 years. If you look at the, the intellectual capital that we have access to in the business. Now, that might sound like a, a trite comment, but the reality is, is that we have skills in the business that have lived through boom and bust cycles. We have seen many events unfold over the last 30 years in investment markets where a lot of our peers who have a lot younger teams haven't really seen or witnessed a lot of these events taking place. And what's interesting is that things, history tends to repeat itself, cycles tend to repeat themselves over long periods of time. And this can be invaluable uh, in terms of adding uh, value to client portfolios and also to the extent that we've avoided um, a lot of uh, disasters in markets. And I mean, I can give you a few examples. African Bank uh, would be a good example where we saw what played out with African Bank take place with Profern um, in the early 2000s. And there are many examples where the market cycles that we see today really are just repetitions of what we've seen in history. And that experience that we think we have in our business um, is certainly one of our big competitive advantages and we think invaluable um, when we look at you know, some of the experience levels of uh, various competitors. So that would be the one 
um, defining factor from a truffle perspective. The other defining factor would be size. So because we are a uh, small to medium sized business, uh, we have a bigger opportunity set in terms of the number of stocks that are available to us in our investment universe. And that's just really a function of our assets under management. So typically a big asset manager with anything in excess of 100 billion has a much more limited opportunity set. They, the, the ability for them to deploy capital into stocks outside the top 40 and make a difference to their performance is very limited. So for smaller managers, people with, with below uh, 100 billion of assets under management, the ability to identify and exploit mispriced opportunities outside the top 40 opportunity set is significantly bigger. And at the end of the day, that just means that the ability to add alpha is greater because you have more stocks to potentially include in your portfolio which are mispriced as opposed to focusing on a very small limited subset of opportunities where sometimes you are forced to take bigger positions in a smaller opportunity set as opposed to spreading your capital. So size absolutely we would say is a defining advantage, another defining advantage from a truffle perspective. I think the last differentiating factor certainly from um, our perspective would be our focus on limiting downside. We run a, a scenario analysis when we're looking at the underlying valuations of our various securities, which we like to call the what if we're wrong analysis. And just to sort of take a step back and maybe explain that to you, what we try and do is we build an investment case for each and every security that we analyze, whether it's a property stock, whether it's an equity, we try and build up to a valuation which we believe is the underlying worth of that business. The intrinsic value uh, is, a, is a generically or commonly used term. Now, asset managers like Truffle, and certainly from our perspective, we have skill, but it's not perfect skill. So because we don't have perfect skill, it means that even if you're a top quartile manager, you're gonna be getting 30 to 40% of your calls wrong uh, over time. So what we do is we look at each and every one of our underlying investment cases and we ask ourselves the question what if we're wrong with this analysis in other words we've, we've given it our best crack in terms of what we think the business is worth we've gone through a detailed and rigorous process to identify what the valuation opportunity or the value of the stock is but what happens if we're wrong what is the downside to being wrong and exposing capital to a particular idea and when we run that analysis, what becomes evident is what is the potential for capital loss. So in other words, if we are wrong with our earnings estimates of the business or the ratings estimates of the business, what does that downside potential look like? And in essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to distill our opportunity set to those ideas which have a return distribution which are skewed to the upside. In other words, where there's a bigger chance of making money, even in the event of us being slightly wrong with some of our assumptions. We would rather be able to get out with the capital that we've put in, in the event that we're wrong, as opposed to being wrong and you write off 60-70% of your capital. So one of the advantages that we think we have is built into our process and is really a process of self-reflection of our investment cases of the underlying securities and questioning what that downside looks like in the event that we're wrong. And we know that many asset managers will get calls wrong over time because you don't get all your calls right. So we think that that's a, certainly a competitive advantage and it really focuses our minds in terms of putting the capital to work in opportunities where there is this margin of safety or where there's a significant discount to what the stock is worth. And then secondly, stress testing that and saying, if we're wrong, what is the chance of losing significant principle? And if there is a chance of losing significant principle based on that analysis, we're not gonna be allocating capital to those opportunities. We're really gonna be looking for those opportunities where that distribution upside you know, is, uh, is obviously skewed to the right hand side. So, so we think a significant advantage from a process point of view um, uh, in terms of our what if we're wrong scenario or limiting downside analysis. Describe the tools in your favor that allow you to run a flexible fund. 
So a flexible fund in essence is a combination of different asset classes where we try and optimize exposures to those asset classes or securities which are reflecting the best risk adjusted returns. And these would be real returns. So here we are focusing on actually generating an inflation or real return over time, an inflation beating return. Uh, and, the, and the real way of doing that is to access real asset classes, in other words, equities and properties, and to some extent bonds over time. And that's the only way you can really generate a real return, is by exposing capital to real assets, principally being equity and property, um, in, an, in a way which creates margin of safety, or where you're buying into these assets at discounts to their underlying intrinsic value, and then holding these assets to a point where the underlying valuation um, then starts to get reflected in the share price uh, as the business compounds and evolves over time. So it really is a strategy about optimizing the returns uh, of the fund really based on what from an asset allocation point of view or an individual security perspective um, looks like the best relative returns or the best real returns for, for clients. Ian, how is your fund different from the other funds that are out there? So Andrew, our flexible fund, uh, first of all, important to mention is it's not Regulation 28. So by definition, this fund has the ability to leverage between asset classes or move between asset classes depending on which asset class reflects the best relative returns over time. So in other words, this fund has the ability to be 100% invested in equity uh, or have a very low equity weighting depending on what prospective asset class returns look like. In terms of the levers that we have to pull um, or the ability to generate returns in this fund, we can access all asset classes. So everything from uh, listed property, listed equity, bonds, both offshore equity, uh, offshore bonds, uh, as well as various derivative strategies we employ to try and maximize uh, returns at the lowest possible risk for our clients. The ultimate goal in this fund is to generate a real return. So we really focus on not uh, losing any capital or minimizing the potential for a capital loss. And a lot of the strategies that we adopt are really focused around that. Not just from an overall asset allocation perspective, but also from an individual security perspective. How we build a portfolio, we very much focus on trying to allocate capital to those assets which we feel can generate real returns over time. And that, at the end of the day, gives us the ability to, to over the longer term, offer a portfolio of assets which has the ability to generate a real return with the probability of not losing um, capital. So we think our flexible fund is quite different from our peer set in the industry. And the reason we say that it is a true flexible fund. And you can see that if you look at our breakdown of our various asset classes where we've tried to get exposure to a lot of different asset classes and securities whose returns are uh, hopefully uncorrelated because effectively what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a portfolio of assets whereby the potential for real returns is there, but also where there's not a huge correlation between a lot of those assets depending on certain market movements. And you can see that when you look at the breakdown of our portfolio and you look at the underlying allocations of capital to those different asset classes over time. So for example, our flexible fund is not just a cash equity fund. We, we utilize all the levers and all the asset classes available to us to try and maximize returns whilst at the same time reducing the risk or exposing the capital to the least possible risks. And you can see that via our exposure to you know, offshore equities, offshore bonds, um, local property, offshore property, and then obviously domestic equity. So we really are accessing every single asset class to try and maximize those real returns over time, but very importantly, also minimizing the potential for capital loss. And the way we do that, as I said earlier, is that we try and focus on asset opportunities where those securities are priced at discounts to their intrinsic value. In other words, you're paying 
a lot less than what the asset is actually worth. We then hold that over time to try and extract that, that value opportunity relative to what share prices price today. Now clearly it's very difficult to forecast returns over the short period, but over the longer term, if you as an allocator of capital and as Truffle, if we have bought securities which are trading at significant discounts to the intrinsic value, or in other words, where there's margin of safety, what that does for a client is it increases the probability of a real return, first of all, but also that margin of safety by definition means that your potential for capital loss is also minimized. And that's really what this fund is about. It's about trying to generate a real return for clients over time, but trying to reduce the underlying risk that we're exposing the capital to in that process. And we do that by really identifying and focusing on securities which are mispriced relative to what they're worth. So trying to buy something that's worth a rand for 50 cents and then hold it for a long period of time. And then as that gap closes, that's the real return that gets unlocked for clients um, over the longer term. Ian, thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge on the funds. Thanks, Andrew, for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, please visit our website.